Get off me, daddy. You're smushing my marbles. If you smoke, you'll get cancer. What do Levi jeans? I, this table is, how's your Dos Um What do Levi jeans and Ethiopians have in common? They both have flies on them. That, donate to UNICEF today. I've been telling those for years. So, I want to hear it from all my ladies. Can I hear, ladies, lady power! Woo! Okay, what part of saying lady power didn't you get? I mean, like, really confusing, it's like, say lady power. All right, let's try it again. Ladies, say lady power! Lady power! For my gentlemen, say boy power! Boy power! For my Latinos, say brown power! For my three African Americans, say black power. Black power. Thank you, girl. For my white people, say white power. Black power. You got uncomfortable, didn't you? <laughs> that made you feel like a racist. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with white power. That's why the government's in a bad shape. Uh, so speaking of things that freak the shit out of me, um, little people. You don't know, think you can say midgets anymore. But, like, little people, you know, I think they're amazing. But I find myself watching them in public to the point of inappropriate. So I had this dream one time, I was watching them, and I was maybe having a few drinks or a smoke, and I was like, you know, if you were to, like, fist them, and then do, like, a puppet show, like, it would be an amazing artistic ability. And you kind of like slowly open your hands inside of their small midget butts. I know you're uncomfortable, but let the laughter out. It's the only class of people that I'm still allowed to make fun of. Come on. You really look right here. And you kind of do, I mean, you have to like give them a little like GHB or some day rate drugs, you know. And then maybe, you know, later on he could go in and do the church, okay, too much, but 
I've always thought that that would be just an amazing live stage performance. Would you watch that? Would you pay twelve dollars for that in two drink minimum? <laughs> <laughs> so the first time I uh, saw a vagina, I was thirteen years old. Well, actually, first time was when I was born, but I don't remember it. Um, but it still slits the back of my hair. Back. And um, so the first time that I really had like contact with a vagina. I, I, I was younger, so I could see. And I was like, oh wow, it, it really does look like roast beef. And, <laughs> and I was always told that you know, if, you, if, if, if I did something to it, it would, it would burst up on me. So I put my finger in it, like this. And she was like, ow, ow, ow. And that's my only sexual contact with a woman ever. And she's now a nun. I publicly ruined her vagina. So, how many of you women have ever had sex with a gay man? All I can say is that all of you have. Do you know how I got through high school? Your boyfriends. Oh, sorry. Not me, not your boyfriend. But, but maybe yours. He was cute, wasn't he? Oh, until he turned. But it's okay. So I'm from the South. Everyone heard of Tennessee? It's really, I've said that before, and people are like, no, where's that? Like, it's a part of the 50. Um, so I grew up in a family of 10. Uh, my parents didn't have much to do, so they did each other. Um, and growing up in the South, we had a lot of weird sayings, like, instead of saying, duh, my grandmother would say, well, does a cat got an ass? Is a frog's ass watertight? It better be. You think about it, you don't want to drown through your ass. And so, my grandmother is my heart and she is my soul, man. She, she's 75 and she calls, she calls me at least four times a day. And I am not exaggerating, you know you're gay when your grandmother calls you four times a day. However, she calls me, um, you know, a few months ago, she goes, Mike, did you know your daddy's on my face? <laughs> and I was like, ma'am? I didn't have to say ma'am. I said, ma'am? And she goes, yeah, your Aunt Sheila, she got on my face the other day. <laughs> I was like, really? And she goes, he, your brother Shane, he's been on my face all day. <laughs> and I'm like, Granny, we are from Tennessee, not Kentucky. <laughs> And she goes, I really love my face. Well, I'm like, well, your face sounds really busy, Grandma. <laughs> and I'm like, you realize that it's Facebook, not my face, right? <laughs> well, you know, it's the new internet. Because <laughs> she's an amazing woman. You gotta give her credit. She has three boyfriends at 75. <laughs> exactly. her, but I told her, when, I'm like, well, what do y'all do together? Well, she goes, well, my thing don't work and his thing don't work, so we just hold hands. <laughs> I was like, oh, that's so cute. She's cute. So, a few months ago, she came and visited me, and we went up to Williams, Arizona. You ever been to Williams? There's not shit there. And except this very random Christmas town, 24 hours, uh, 24 days, 24 days, because there's 24 days, by the way, 365 days a year. So, we're up there, and um, my grandmother, she doesn't have any boundaries with what she says. So, we're getting on the train, and she looks back. And now, you have to realize, she's slow as molasses. I mean, girl, she's just so slow. And I try to not get frustrated, because I have a little bit of ADHD. So I'm like, go, fucking go, bitch. But I can't say that, because she's my grandmother. And that's like, total rude. And so, she's like slowly, slowly stepping up onto this train that is three and a half hours long to the canyon and back. And she turns around in front of all these people, and she goes, Mike, my bladder just fell out. <laughs> And I was like, well, push it back in, Grant, get on the train. And so we go and she sits down and she goes, oh, it feels better. I'm like, well, did you get it back in? She goes, yes. And I'm like, well, how does your bladder fall out? Well, I was diagnosed with testicular cancer. I said, Granny, you realize you don't have testicles, right? Well, they're in my bladder. She's one of those paranoid women that has been diagnosed or diagnosed herself with everything from diabetes 
to testicular cancer, that any disease that she hears, like, she's like, I got salmonella poisoning. I'm like, did you eat raw chicken? I don't eat chicken. Well, how the hell did you get salmonella poisoning? And so she calls me a few weeks back, and she goes, Mike, now sit down. I've, I've been to the doctor. Now, we've had this conversation at least 7,000 times in my 35 years on this earth, and I was like, okay, so I kept doing what I was doing, which was masturbating, which was a little uncomfortable. I was talking to your grandmother, but porn is a stronger message. And she's like, well, I went to the doctor, and I'm like, all right, yes, ma'am. And what they tell you? She goes, well, you know that time I lived out there in Arizona? I'm like, yes, ma'am, you lived at the Apache Junction. What? Have you ever been to Apache Junction? It is the white trash equivalent to a full-fledged trailer park. Four Walmarts open 24 hours a day, seven days a week, to serve your white trash needs. And so she lived out here off and on for about six years, and I'm like, all right, ma'am, yes, ma'am, you live out in Arizona. Well, they diagnosed me with the jungle fever. And I was like, what, They diagnosed you with the jungle fever? Yes, yeah, yeah. All the time I spent out there, I breathed in that air, it got in my lungs. I'm like, you mean to tell me you got a jungle fever in your lungs? <laughs> yes, yes, man. I said, so you mean to tell me the fact that you lived in Arizona for six years, you now have a strong attraction for black men? Because I ain't hating you, at least we got something in common. And she goes, why'd you talk like that? Because she still whispers on the phone, so that way nobody will hear. I'm like, Granny, you ain't got jungle fever. You have valley fever. She goes, well, people have been looking at me real weird. I'm like, well, they're proud of you. You've come a long way since segregation in the South. I appreciate y'all listening to my set. Find me on Facebook, Cosmos, too. Have a very nice